Hey everybody, this is Paul, 125 Roller Coaster Challenge, and we are here actually at Marineland. This is our uh, 17th, uh, actually 18th park of the year. And uh, this has been a uh, park that wasn't on our list, but I figured at this point there, I was so close with uh, Niagara Amusement Park that it just makes sense. So this is uh, kind of an aquarium, a penguin, and a whole nine yards. But we're actually here for the roller coasters and the ride attractions, so we're gonna head this way. Uh, from what I understand, it's a long walk to get to these attractions here. But uh, as you can tell, uh, this is a Sunday in July, and there's some people here, but it's not really mobbed. But as soon as you walk in, because right there is the uh, entrance, as soon as you walk in, right over here is King Waldorf's Theater. Uh, and they have show times here. Now, I'm only going to be here for about two, maybe three hours, because uh, the whole point of me coming out this way was actually to get to Niagara Amusement Park, which will be our 19th park. Oh, that's kind of cute. I like the whale shop there, but uh, so I'm only here for about two hours. I want to do an explore, uh, get a couple of shorts and stuff like that, and then head over to Niagara. Uh, but there is uh, two roller coasters here, and I'd like to get those credits. Uh, the Dragon Mountain is the big boy here. It's a uh, old classic arrow. But, so I always hear a lot of negatives about this park, and I uh, usually don't listen to them until you know, I really need to. Uh, a lot of times. Uh, people have different opinions. Wow, if you need a balloon whale, there you go. So if you've been to uh, Marine Land, please let us know what your thoughts are in the comments. But uh, yeah, this is a quick little walkthrough. Now, give me a quick heads up here. Uh, I was not prepared to uh, come to Canada. So with that being said, I... Uh, Pretty much uh, didn't have any Canadian money. I just kind of, I had my passport. I was lucky I had that, but. So right here is, right by King Wardrobe's Palace is a restaurant called The Hungry Bear. Looks like you can get a barbecue dinner, uh, nook this hot dog platter and all that stuff. But when you head out this way, this is uh, pretty much, from what I understand, this is a long walk to get to the attractions. So, but like I was saying, so when I got here, I wasn't prepared. So I only had USD and um, so the night before, I saw it was $53, and I went over there real quick and uh, did the conversions. It's like $40, but the tax rate is so high in Canada that, believe it or not, it says family rides this way. So we're going to wander over here quick, see what the family rides are. But um, it took basically so much. Uh, it actually ended up being like 53 USD. So instead of me prepared for forty dollars, it was fifty-three. Now, of course, if you use a credit card, they're going to uh, take care of that that rate there. But I could not believe how high the taxes were there. It's like thirteen dollars in taxes on a uh, forty-dollar thing. So definitely be prepared. Uh, Canada is different than the U.S. So we are international now. All right. So we're over here. So we basically walked in. We saw the uh, Penguin Palace, and then we headed over this way quick to. Uh, to the uh, left hand side and uh then we started going deeper in here but i just saw a sign said family ride so let's go see what they got family ride here and once again if you have actually been here before let us know your thoughts i'm uh you know this is my first time here this is a full uh pretty much the walkthrough is a complete uh explore i've never been here never really knew much about it one of our uh subscribers actually uh, made a comment hey why don't you go to marine land so I looked it up. All right, so this is called the uh, Tyvoka Wheel. This is the first attraction you come to. Uh, this looks like a classic uh, Ferris wheel type ride. I actually never seen one like that ever. Uh, if you have, definitely let me know. But I haven't seen that ever before. Now over here's the Ladybug Coaster. And I will be riding this today because that is a coaster credit. So but it looks like it's a pretty simple uh, Simple ladybug ride here. And right here is Eagle Tower. So this looks like a really fun uh, drop tower. Oh, there's Ladybug. So this isn't too far away from the front there. So this is the Ladybug Coaster. And they're having a blast. Over here is the Eagle Tower. So this is kind of like, um, a frog hopper, a lot taller, but I also like the fact that it spins. That's kind of neat. Wow, you got a good cycle there on the ladybug. And back here, there's another attraction. So right off the bat, as soon as you get into the park, there are some uh, interesting uh, family rides right there. Wow, they're still going. All right, 
it and see what's over here. So this looks like sea dragons. This is a neat little ride there. I can honestly say I'm actually impressed with the theming here. There's actually water in there, so that's kind of nice. And then over here, it looks like a, this is called the boat carousel. So they're not lying, but the boats are fantastic if you look at them. Well themed, they look beautiful. So I'm very impressed with that. And then over here is a giant bumblebee thing. And it's called the bumblebee. So the theming matches the name. Right there it says bumblebee. So there you are. This is pretty nice. So I'm actually enjoying what I'm seeing so far. Um, like I uh, said before, you always hear negatives, but sometimes it's just people's perceptions. Uh, this is called the Orca Screamer. So this kind of looks like the Eagle's Nest, almost the same thing, but this one's themed towards, uh, of course, an orchid. And it looks over here like there's one other attraction back here called uh, Viking Adventure. Now, uh, Viking Adventure might not be going. I don't see anybody there. Oh, I know, there's somebody sitting there. So there is a Viking Adventure. So these family rides uh, look pretty nice. Oh, so this is a classic kind of pipe screen thing that you see. Uh, and then it pivots and stuff. So this is a Viking Adventure. That is a pretty nice little attraction there too. Now looking at where I'm at, it looks like I am right here by a picnic area. I love the fact that it says Molson Canadian Lager. So uh, you're definitely in Canada when you see that. And right over by the Viking thing is actually the first aid. So, so far this Explorer, I'm actually uh, pleasantly surprised. I'm uh, liking it right now. So. Um, Hopefully uh, this continues. So there's another ride here that says that. Now right here is the King um, Wardorf's Theater. So basically we went the one direction around and I just kind of wrapped around here. So this would be uh, the restaurant, I think it's uh, the Bear, Hungry Bear or something. I'll check that in a second. So right here is King Wardorf's Palace, but it's closed. But they do have shows here at this theater, noon, three and 6.15. And it looks like it is an orchid show or some kind of a uh, whale show. All right, so here we are, we're back here. This ice cream thing. And uh, what is it, the Hungry Bear. So this is the Hungry Bear Cafe. So we basically uh, just did a full circle. And now we're gonna start walking towards the back of the park. And I'm sure it is a whale show because right there it says whale shop. So now things are starting to make sense. So like I said, when we do these explorers, we're learning together, people. And we're about eight minutes into the video right now. And if you're still watching, that means you kind of like what we do here. So uh, if you do like this video, definitely make sure you uh, hit the like button. Now that's cheating, having a Kubota. I'm gonna be putting on some steps today. But uh, like I was saying, if you like what we do, definitely hit the like button. It definitely helps us out with the algorithm, but it also lets us know uh, this is the kind of stuff you want us to do more of. Uh, in particular, like I said, this one I did not do any research on, so I am completely learning when you are learning. So Now what I learned about this park is it is simply huge. Uh, there's a lot of walking involved at this park, and there's a lot of area there, but right there in the distance you see uh, one of their main attractions, which is their drop tower. Uh, it's one of the tallest drop towers, not because of the structure being the tallest, but mainly because uh, the uh, it's on a giant hill. So, all right, so it looks like we're coming to another fork in the road. And over here is, uh, to the right would be the picnic areas. So it seems like this is like another Wal uh, Waldemere and Knobles where you can bring your own picnic lunch and stuff. Uh, they do have season tick uh, passes and uh, I got a day pass. So I'm, I can play around here all day. However, I do have uh, an ambitious goal of hitting one of my favorite parks from last year, uh, beautiful scenic uh, Niagara over on Grand Island. So, but this is our 18th park of the year. Uh, so if you have been following along with us, we are trying to get to 50 parks. So as we uh, continue, this would actually be a four, four park weekend. Uh, now I know uh, the new Cognac Lake Park doesn't really count because it's not really doing anything. But you know what? We went there, we walked around, we did a full explore. I'm going to count it as a park. All right, so when you come around this corner here, this is simply beautiful. Make it a little bit darker so you can see the uh, drop tower, but 
right here this is called the polar splash and there's more ride attractions here and another thing i noticed too is there's a lot of tower kind of things structures but we're going to walk over to the polar splash splash quick and uh, see what it is i'm assuming it would be polar bears but sometimes you're not right on these actually i'm not right it looks like it's actually like a water park yeah it's actually a water thing here wow this is kind of neat and then there's friendship cove so let's check out the polar splash quick and then we'll go to friendship cove but yeah that is a great facade right there i love it and you come over here yeah it looks like it's a uh, splash pool area but the neat thing about it is look at all the different structures here so you check it out there there's nobody in it which uh well very few people in it but look at it. you got the beluga whales right there that are actually shooting uh, water out of their blowhole come over here you got porpoises and you got the backdrop of the uh the tower right there but this is actually a very nice splash zone i can't believe it's not being utilized because everybody up there is staff so that's kind of uh i mean i heard this park is hurting so definitely support these smaller parks but uh, that looks like an amazing splash thing here and let's see what's over here this is friendship cove so let's see what's going on at friendship cove And there's an underwater viewing area so we're going to go over here and see the top and then we'll go down below and you can see the underwater aspect of it these are the beluga whales in their arctic home so these are beluga whales in here like i said if you don't know much about this park uh oh right there it is right in front of us beluga whales wow i am beyond impressed and we got a nice little structure here. Let's see if they come back around. And then we'll go to the underwater viewing section. Yeah, they are in the distance, if you can see them there. It looks like there's two of them. Oh, here they come. They're pretty quick, so let's see them wrap around the corner. We'll get another good view of them here before we go down to the underwater viewing section. There's actually three of them. There's one. See him right there running along the water. So let's go check out the underwater viewing section here and see what we got. So we're going to head down here real quick. And we can check him out real quick. And then we'll go and continue on to the other sections of this park. All right, so here you go. So we're basically underneath where we just were. see him right there there's one right in front of us and come over here to the farther side so there you go oh, why don't you be shooting by here in a second but it looks like there's two different areas but right up in front of us there's one up there too So this is something I've never seen at SeaWorld, so this is something a little bit different, and I love it. Come back over to this side, you can see a couple more. So that is the underwater section uh, of the Beluga Whales. And now we're walking back out of that section there one of the more crowded areas and we're going to head back towards the uh, back of the park there over by the drop tower so once again thank you for watching we greatly appreciate it here uh, and if you do like what we do, what we do or if this is your first time and you're liking what we're doing uh, make sure you subscribe the uh, link is at the end of the uh, video and stuff like that so we're gonna come over here real quick there it looks like there's a little bit more activity there but yet again having this splash zone area and nobody there just blows me away. It's called the Polar Splash. It has a great facade too. Now the other thing I'm noticing about this park is they got a castle area, which is simply amazing. 
So everything about this place is well themed. So this is actually called the Deer Park. So we're gonna jump over there quick. Actually, before we do that, here's another view of the Polar Splash. So you can see all the water attractions. It is amazing, all the water, and there's one person in there. Hard to believe that they got a waterfall over there. I mean, that is just beautiful. Let's go over here to the Deer Park area. And I can honestly say, I walked into this Explore video not really expecting much, and I have been incredibly blown away. Uh, so much so that I might be re recommending this uh, this park. This might be uh, one of my new favorites here. I'm lucky enough to be going to the Buffalo area a few times a year, and uh, this was a complete spur of the moment, but I'm liking what I'm seeing so far. There's a lot of deer right there. Now, being from Pennsylvania, uh, we're kind of used to deer. Uh, deer don't really excite us as much, but uh, looks like they're feeding them right there. So you can actually, uh, right here you can actually see them all being fed. Right there. And then if you come over here, you can actually see uh, some in their habitat in the back there. Walking by there. But yet again, look at that facade. I mean, just the facade by itself is costing tens of twenties of fifty, hundred thousand um, dollars. So I'm impressed with that. All right, and we're coming back upon the uh, polar splash, and now we're going to head over to the right and go to more of the larger attractions. So so far, uh, we saw the penguin area, which was nice. I was very impressed with the penguin area. Uh, definitely impressed with the uh, beluga whales. And then of course, this is one of the best uh, splash pads I've ever seen. Now the sad part is, we're walking down the main midway here. Oh, there's a little snack area. Um, smoothies and pretzels and stuff. Remember, this is Canadian prices. But here we are, this is a Sunday in July. And I'm walking down the main fairway, and it's empty. And, uh, it shouldn't be that way, because uh, really this is part of a tourist area. It's uh, pretty much right up against a uh, Niagara Falls. Looks like this is a restaurant right here. And uh, we'll do a short there, but here's the thing. Uh, there's the deer park. So if you look, they still have this entire castle facade going along the back here. Uh, and there's no other reason for it. There's, you know, it's just really, uh, you want to talk about a theme park. Um, I don't know the history about this park, but I'm impressed with the uh, theming so far. But yet again, this is a Sunday in July, uh, prime tourist season for uh, Niagara Falls. And I don't see anybody on this path. So if you're in the area, especially if you're going to Six Flags Darien Lake, if you're going to Canada's Wonderland, if you're going to Niagara Amusement Park, this is on the way. There's really no reason not to stop in here. And the pricing isn't that bad. Like I said, a day pass costs $53 um, USD. Um, with the tax, it would be more expensive, of course, with Canada. Uh, the tax, like I said, it's one of those things I was, did not expect it to be that high. But it is what it is. So I'm gonna pause for a second here because there's really nothing here. And we're gonna jump ahead. All right, we are back and we're right in front of the Sky Screamer. So uh, this opens at noon and it's actually not noon yet, uh, 15 minutes till noon, but I'm gonna walk up there. But like I said before, uh, this is the tallest drop tower. And from what I understand, you get some of the most amazing views of Niagara Falls. So if you've actually ever ridden this, please let us know what your thoughts are. Uh, I'm not a drop tower guy to begin with, and I really don't think I need to go on one of the tallest ones. But we're gonna walk up here real quick here. But there it is on top, you can hear it. You can hear that it's getting all ready to go. But yet again, if you have difficulty walking, this might not be the park for you. Um, I was talking to one of the uh, staff members here, I'm like, you guys really should rent scooters or something. But uh, I'm in pretty good shape, and I am actually huffing and puffing going up these stairs. Oh uh, well, this incline. It's quite an incline to get up here. So definitely if, uh, you have difficulty walking, this might not be the park for you, or you gotta stay by the kids section in a restaurant. So I'm gonna pause till I get to the top. 
All right, everybody, we finally made it to the top. I am winded, but there's some picnic tables up here where you can sit back and relax. And right here is the tallest drop tower. Now, it looks like uh, they definitely need to do some weeding here. And you can hear the drop tower going. Now, it doesn't open until noon, but uh, if you're looking to ride it, there's a reason why this is one of the tallest. If you look over here in the distance, you can actually see the Dragon Mountain Coaster, which is why I'm here. That's going to be my 320th coaster. So I still have a little bit of a walking to go there. There's also a train right here, which I wish I would have known about earlier, because I probably would have enjoyed it. All right, I had to take a second there to catch my breath there because that was a long hike. But one thing about this is you got the beautiful view right there is uh, the area around Niagara Falls and everything here. But you got plenty of food here. You got restrooms uh, right by the uh, tall tower. Uh, I can honestly say that I've been pretty impressed with uh, the cleanliness of everything. And uh, there's a lot of birds around here. There's a bird right there. Probably because we're right by the Niagara. But uh, coming out here, this is a beautiful park. And uh, what's really neat is I get a great view of the Dragon Mountain Coaster, which is all over that mountain right there. You see all the loops, there's actually four inversions. And right there's some more attractions there. So we're gonna start heading down. And uh, I'm not gonna bore you with the walk down, but I am going to give you a little bit of a view here, showing you everything that is available up here. Uh, so if you are in great shape or decent shape, uh, it's beautiful up here. Uh, I can see it on a beautiful sunny day and all that, but uh, right now uh, it's kind of dead and the tower's not going yet. It'll be going later on today. So I'll meet you on the bottom of the hill. All right, we're about halfway down and from here you can actually see on this side here uh, they got a fine falcon and they got some other attractions there, which is kind of neat. I haven't gone to that section yet. And then right up there you can see it is uh, Niagara Falls. That's a uh, Niagara River out there, which uh, basically gives you the falls. So there we are. They're, the noise you hear is they are testing, of course, the uh, drop tower. Actually, there it goes. I'm not a huge fan of drop towers. I'm not a, f a huge fan of heights here, but I figured I'll uh, give you a little bit of the walk down here because the walk down's a lot easier than a walk up. And you can see other aspects. So right below us here is the actual um, splash pad. And I went over there to the orchid section, but I didn't realize there was a section back there. So we're gonna backtrack a little bit. We're gonna go back over there and we're going to uh, check out the rides over there. Uh, there's a lot of different things that diverge. Right there's the castle that's over by the deer. So I'll give you a perspective of where we've been, but uh, here's like a sky view of the uh, splash pad area, the polar uh, escape. And yet again, I still think it's probably one of the best uh, splash pads I've ever seen, actually. But I did not know that it actually went farther deeper that way. So once I get to the bottom of this long hill, we're gonna backtrack real quick there. We're gonna basically jump there. And I know this is sacrilegious because one thing I take pride in when it comes to the Explore videos is we do a one take. But this park is so big and so vast that it's very difficult to actually do that. So um, I'm gonna pause till we get over by the uh, splash pad and then we're gonna walk down that section. So we are almost back at the splash pad and I noticed right here they got the train. So when I was at the top of the tower hill, which was the most brutal hill I've ever walked up, uh, the train was there. So I believe the train you actually pick up right here and it will actually take you uh, up that hill. And that's information I wish I knew about 10 minutes ago. But so here we are back at the polar splash at Marine Land. And it tells you all the different whales and all that kind of stuff here. But we're gonna wrap around the corner of this and go down that path that I uh, thought was just the uh, beluga whales. But it was actually a path to get to other attractions. Yet again, there's only a few people in here. Most of them seem to be uh, the staff. So. If you are somebody in this area, please support this park because it is such a unique and beautiful park 
I'd love for it to be around for a while. Oh look, it shot off the fountain for a little bit. I think in a second it's gonna launch off. All right, so right here is the Belugas. And there's a sign that says ride attractions. I must have missed it. So we're passing Friendship Cove, or that might be what the section is called. There's a waterfall. So we're gonna head over this way towards Friendship Cove. See, I thought that was Friendship Cove, but I think this section over here is. Yet again, I'm so impressed with this splash zone. And right there is the Sky Tower. So see that big hill? That's what I just walked up. So I'm very proud of myself that I didn't pass out because uh, that was kind of bru brutal. I got two bol uh, polar bears going at it. Got the beluga whales. I mean, seriously, this is uh, probably the best splash pad I've ever seen. Uh, if we were ranking splash pads, this is the number one. Now I will definitely do a spotlight on this splash pad. I'm so impressed with it. All right, so over here, this section up here is called Ocean Odyssey. And yet again, I would have completely missed it. And you guys would have been so upset with this Explore if it wasn't for me climbing the Tower of Death. So let's see what we got here. So it does look like every one of these areas is nicely themed. Uh, yet again, they definitely uh, got a lot of the castle facades here. So we're gonna go over to the right because this is my video and that's what I wanna do. But let's check out and see what we got. Oh, the ride is called Ocean Odyssey. Oh, wow, this is beautiful. Wow, this is one of the most beautiful uh, rides I've ever seen like this. And you got water, so you actually go right by the water. This is beautiful. Beyond impressed here. You got propellers going on some of them. You can go up and down. So that is very impressive. Let's see what's back here. I think there's more. So we're going to go over and check out everything on the right hand side. Then we're going to go look at everything on the left. Uh, just trying to make sure that uh, I get everything that's back here. So back here looks like we got a flying trapeze. Called the Wave Swinger. It's always great when you have the Wave Swinger name. Now I'm a little curious here. I'm actually going to backtrack here because it looks like that goes around. This might not be a dead end like I was thinking. So let's go see what's over here across from the Ocean Odyssey. I thought it was a cove where you turn around and you were done, but it looks like it might wrap around and I don't want to keep having to pause this. So let's see what this one's called right here. This is called, looks like it's closed down but it looks like it was an old attraction. It's no longer there. If you know what the name of this attraction was, please let, please let us know in the comment section, uh, cause I'm always interested on rides that are no longer around. But Ocean Odyssey, I gotta say, is simply beautiful. Fantastic. Now around here is the Flying Dragon. Goes with the uh, whole castle theme. And let's see what this bad boy does. That's the drop tower making some noise. You can hear that throughout the entire park. So this is the Flying Dragon. And it looks like it's almost like a... If you know the official name of these rides, please let me know. But this looks like a... Uh, well, you got uh, almost like a uh, twister over at Six Flags Great Adventure there. Uh, but you're facing each other. So this is kind of a neat little ride. I always like unique rides, and this definitely looks like a unique ride. So that's the uh, Flying Dragon. That looks like it's a snack bar that's not open. So let's come over here. Here's the Wave Swinger. Now we all know we all love Wave Swingers, uh, but they are a, are a favorite ride of people, and this one's going pretty good. So this one looks like a traditional Wave Swinger. Beautiful setting though, right in the middle. And when you come over here, it's neat how they have them all kind of spread out all the different rides. So let's see what's over here. All right, this one, uh, 
Uh, that was a washrooms, but I don't know. I doubt that's the name of this ride. So this is a Flying Falcon uh, or a Condor. Now it looks a little bit smaller, but you can see this is a great picture right here. You got the Flying Condor right next to the uh, giant drop tower. This is called Skyhawk. So that's the name right there, Skyhawk. But uh, these are, they've been everywhere. Uh, always love these kind of uh, uh, rides and stuff. I love how you have them both right next to each other in the background. Now let's see what's down this way. This is called the Arctic Cove, down this way. So there's definitely a lot of space between all of these attractions. So when you're walking around here, you can go a long way before you see things. But over here is a open snack bar. And we're gonna come over here real quick here and see what's uh, down the Arctic area. All right, so I just got some uh, inside information and this is the other side of the Beluga Whales. But if we head this way, this is where we want to go. So basically uh, that path right there would take us back to the Beluga Whales, which we already saw, you know, and if you missed it, just rewind. Be kind, rewind. So this is a fish feeding area, but wow, you want to talk about beautiful. Look at all these birds. This is just so beautiful and so scenic. Let me come up here for a second. I don't want to chase the bird though. But definitely check it out. There's ducks, there's swans. So many birds in this area here. Got them right in front of us, so hopefully, uh, hopefully they're friendly. All right, there they go. I'm staying on the path. You guys get the grass. I'll stay on the path, guys. Now, of course, when you have this many birds, there's a lot of bird poop, so just be prepared for that if you walk over here. Yep, there's some more birds. Oh, there's giant fish in there, too. I don't know if you can see them through the camera here, but all around here, there's yeah, you can see them in there. There's just so many fish, so many birds. And there's a ride back there, so we can go over and check out that ride. But yeah, so this is definitely, uh, if, you, if you like seagulls, they've got a lot of seagulls here. And come over here, there's one sign that says fish feed. But I think you can also probably feed the birds too. So we're going to come around this way. I'm going to burn my shoes after this trip. You can get really close to the birds. But yep, birds everywhere. So you're looking for a, a beautiful park. You got a great chance here with all the beautiful parks. Look at this. Love birds, hate birds, but there's a lot of birds. All right, so looks like we're out of this section and we're gonna come over here because there is teacups in the shape of orcas. So of course you want to see that because I want to see that, right? So here we go. And actually they're not a traditional, uh, not a traditional uh, orchid here. What's it called? It's called the uh, Can Do's Twister. So we'll come over here and we'll get a little bit of video on it. I was just say for a ride like this, it's very quiet. So that's the can do twister. And now we're gonna wrap around this way. And I was told by a reliable source that this will take us to Dragon Mountain, which is at the far back of the park and is their marquee attraction here. Besides the uh, Sky Tower, which is of course right there in front of us. So let's head over this way. Now back here, there's actually more wildlife uh, aspects too. So there is a lot here. Oh, there goes the tower. It's actually going up and down. There it goes. If you've ever been on that tower, you let us know. Because I know I'm not going to be on that tower. So All 
right. So there's a sign that says oh, ride attractions here, but there's a couple things over here I want to go check out real quick. And then we're going to finish up over our, at the far end there, which I believe is the dragon ride. So. So let's head over here to it's right you can actually hear uh the old arrow looper going so all right so when you come over here this is magic experience you got the backdrop right there Let me up that up a little bit here this looks like a nice uh, temporarily out of service which is time of year you get that but yet again wonderfully themed it looks like it's one of the older attractions so here, I like the bear in the middle there, if you can see that. There's the bear in the middle. All right. So we're gonna come over here, we're gonna see. So this is the main walkway that'll get you back to the sky tower. That wraps around, so if I go to the right here, it pretty much will take us to the sky tower. So we're gonna come over this direction. And there's a couple more attractions out here. I definitely want to make sure we see, but so this is bear feed. So if there's a sign that says bear feed. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say there's probably a bear here or something. And you know what? It's an American black bear, which is ironic considering we are in Canada. So uh, now to get close enough, I gotta spook a couple of thousand birds. There we go. But if you look right there on the rock, there is the American black bear in Canada, people. So, and these birds are not afraid of me. But right there's a black bear. And there's another one over there by the water too. So, if you do not like birds, I would not recommend coming out this way because there is a lot of birds, people. A lot of birds, look at them all. Probably because people keep feeding things. So this is a pretty big uh, enclosure here. If you look over here, there is another, uh, bear on the rock right there too. So let me zoom in there so you can see the bear. There's the bear on the rock. So this is actually one of the better bear ones that I've seen. There's been a lot of bear ones in the past that I've actually never uh, got to uh, actually see, especially at Hershey Park. And over here is that train again, people. That train is everywhere. Actually, check it out. Quick little thing here. There is actually a black bear family let me zoom in. Right over there, there's a little baby cub by the branch. And you can see the one bear is actually hanging on, uh, walking on the, the big uh, stick there. But this is the Marine Land Express. Let's see if we can get a little bit closer. Yeah, if you look over here, you can actually uh, see a full bear family right here. And that one bear right there is actually sitting on a log. Great balance. That is pretty impressive. All right, so we're gonna come over here quick. Uh, yet again, a lot of these snack bars don't seem to be open. But here is, uh, for me, the marquee attraction, which is the uh, Dragon Mountain. And this is the, uh, that is the uh, turnaround right there. So we're gonna come over here quick and we're gonna see who comes flying through in a second not that long people write that down put it in the comments please is it really that long we'll find out so go to coastal force and check out their pov all right so here it goes and it's one of the longest roller coasters at over 5,500 uh, feet in length i believe it may be the longest steel coaster there is yeah there it goes oh there it goes around the corner no, we're good here. We're all about the ambiance here with uh, 125 Roller Coaster, so. We want to hear from you here, but I want to get that shot of this thing going through this uh, butterfly element. I think it's still going. Hopefully it didn't get stuck because I still need to get that credit, but uh, it should be shooting through here in a second, hopefully. This is riveting television, people, isn't it? Yes. But that's what we do with the Explore video. We, we, we capture every moment, even the mundane. All right, I hear something. I hear something. It's an arrow. You should be able to hear it miles away. 
So you, however long this is, just remember, this is how long this ride is. It is one of the longest uh, roller coasters in uh, not just length, but also in time. Because uh, it does go fairly fast, but it's nothing compared to the newer ones like Fury 325 or uh, uh, El Toro and rides like this. This is this is state of the art in 1983. All right, they, this was the time when they actually had to do the math on paper before computers did it. But here it comes. Here you go. And that is Dragon Mountain over here at Marine Land. And we're gonna walk on through over here now. And we're almost at the back of the park. Now, usually when we do an explore video, we actually go back and forth, back and forth, right? And we go all the way back to the front. No, guys, we're gonna stop here at the uh, entrance of Dragon Mountain, just because of the fact that this is probably already a 40 minute video, but uh, they definitely got some great shots here of uh, the ride. But there is a couple more attractions here. Over here, we actually do have a, uh, looks like they got a snack bar right here, right by Dragon Mountain. And right there, that is the entrance to Dragon Mountain. It actually looks like a dragon if you look at it. You zoom in there. Yeah, it actually looks like a dragon's face there, so that's kind of neat. But right next to it is, looks like it is a, one of those uh, newer rides like the, they have over at uh, Camp's Wonderland. This one's called the Sky Voyager. Now, of course, it's closed. It's out of service. Uh, as you can tell, you can usually tell something's out of service when you see a crane right in front of it here. But that is... The uh, Sky Voyage, uh, yeah, it kind of looks like uh, one of these modern rides you would see at Canada's Wonderland, so that's kind of nice. Now I'm going to come back here a little bit farther because the path is still going. And I'm going to see if there's any other attractions. It looks like right over here we have a few more, but in conclusion, because we're getting ready to finish up this video finally, uh, if you've been to Marineland, let us know what you love about it. Let us know what you don't like about it. Uh, this is a impromptu number 18 amusement park to hit this year. Uh, so I wanna know what you were thinking there. And also, if you got this far in the video, you probably liked it, definitely hit the like button. That really means a lot to us. And then last but not least, if you're new to the 125 Roller Coaster Challenge and you like what we do, definitely subscribe. We're hitting 50 amusement parks this year and we do daily videos. Sometimes they're shorts, but sometimes they're explorers, let's eat, all these different types of uh, series we have. And subscribing really means a lot to us. So once again, this is Paul. We're over here at Marineland. Wow, so that's the mountain there. And there's the ride. That's why it took so long to go. That ride goes forever. But we are here at Marineland, basically on the other side of the Niagara River in beautiful, scenic Ontario, Canada. And these are the Red Deer. And you know what? We're not gonna end you on a sign. We're gonna let you see the Red Deer. Have a great day.